Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the candidate forum for Elgin Township trustees in the April 6th consolidated election. This forum is hosted by the League of Women Voters of the Elgin area. My name is Carol Grom and I will be the moderator tonight. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that works to empower voters and encourage informed participation in our democracy. One of the ways we do that is to hold candidate forums to provide voters an opportunity to hear the candidates running for election. The forums sponsored by the League give candidates for local offices a chance to present information about themselves and their candidacy, background, skills, education, reasons for running for office, what they hope to accomplish if elected, and positions on various issues relevant to the office. All candidates in contested races were invited to participate in a forum. Each one was given the opportunity to fill out a candidate questionnaire on our website and their written responses, if any, can be found in the voter guide. This evening, you will have a chance to hear from four of the eight candidates for four open Elgin Township trustee seats. Democrats Richard Poulton and Susan Van Wielden and Republicans Alejandro Lopez and Eric Stair. Candidates Mark Bialik, Ed Guerra, Charlisa Sangster, and Janet Rogala chose not to participate. The format for today's forum will be a three minute opening statement followed by two minute responses to questions from the moderator and ending with two minute closing statements. Our timekeeper will show the candidates when they have one minute left 30 seconds left and when their time is up. Questions for the candidates were selected from those submitted by league members. After the question and answer period, the candidates will have the opportunity to give a two minute closing statement beginning in reverse order. This forum will be recorded and posted to the LWVEA YouTube channel where it will be available for viewing via links on the league website lwvelginarea.org. So welcome to our candidates and thank you for agreeing to participate tonight. Mr. Lopez, we will begin with your three minute opening statement. Well, thank you uh, so much for having me on. Uh, just a little introduction. I, uh, um, I am an architect uh, licensed in the state of Illinois in Wisconsin. Uh, architecture is uh, one of my passions, uh, not just uh, my profession. Uh, I am a, an award-winning uh, architect, and I've been practicing for about 20 years. I've uh, designed many schools in the region, uh, including uh, Elgin Community College, uh, their multi-classroom edition, and uh, their uh, main entry. I've been married uh, to my uh, junior high sweetheart for about 25 years. We have two kids. Uh, both in college, one at Northwestern University and uh, one in ISU, studying uh, 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 education and uh, uh, neuroscience. Uh, <clears throat> we've been Elgin residents for about uh, 16 years, I believe. Uh, both my kids grew up here, and uh, I've been involved in the community with year for years, <laughs> uh, teaching uh, architecture and uh, coaching football and wrestling. Uh, and uh, I am also uh, uh, in the Invest Aurora board. I am on the City of Elgin uh, Planning and Zoning uh, Committee. And uh, uh, that's, pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Mr. Poulton. Thanks to the League of Women Voters for organizing and hosting these forums and to those of you taking time to view them, especially thanks Carol Thanks to Carol, because I know you've been moderating these longer than you want to admit to, so I appreciate that. Back when I was born in, and raised in Ohio and learned from my parents' examples of contributing to the community, I've uh, em emulated that behavior, realizing how blessed I am with good health, strong work ethic, and willingness to serve others. Working my way through college, I was president of a national organization supporting non-traditional college students. And after moving to Illinois to pursue job opportunities, I continued seeking ways to continue to contribute other than through my work experiences. I've been held, I held a customer service positions and managed teams of over 200 members and budgets exceeding a million dollars. 
I was fortunate to be able to take an early retirement, which enabled me to further concentrate in serving those in my community and beyond. Since retirement, I've served on numerous boards and have held leadership positions and roles in organizations from those that are international to those that are grassroots in nature. Organizations that number tens of thousands to those that have consisted of 10 members. Not only did I lead these organizations, but I also worked in them, doing everything from developing and implementing strategic plans to climbing the creeks to collect water samples. You see, I'm a leader and a doer. I believe one can best lead through example. Although I have been recognized by international organizations such as Qantas International, um, <clears throat> which teaches our youth the leadership skills and the benefits of providing service to, the, to their communities. I've also been recognized by local organizations such as the Elgin Chamber, Kane County Casa, the Association for Individual Retirement, I'm sorry, Individual Development, uh, just to name a few, is by reading to preschoolers, leading, re leading efforts to collect funds for, and volunteering for food banks that give me the greatest sense of accomplishment. That's when I learned, uh, that is why when I learned of an Elgin Township trustee vacancy, I sought out the position believing that I would be able to make a more significant community impact in that role. And since August of 2019, I believe I've done so. Since being appointed, I've been delivering food to seniors, led an effort to reuse uh, an acre, almost an acre of township property, organized the township's first blood drive, which resulted in providing much needed blood to 42 people, assisted elementary students to increase elite re reading skills, actively supported the implementation of a referendum in mental health, streamlined the township funding approval process, and served uh, as a township liaison to the committee on seniors. I've also partnered with the Salvation Army to uh, provide coats for children who had none during the winter. Um, uh, I met, uh, also met with the township employees to understand their roles and responsibilities, even driving, uh, driving, riding with one of the snow plows. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stair, your opening statement, please. Good evening. My name is Eric Stair, and I wanna thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to introduce myself and take a few moments to talk about who I am, what I believe in, and why I'm running for Elgin Township Trustee. I'm a former Marine and served honorably as a corrections and military police officer from 1997 to 2001. I served three years at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and a year in Okinawa, Japan. I grew up in Roselle and moved back to the area in 2001. I was a real estate appraiser for a number of years and currently work for Republic Services as a driver trainer. My wife, Kelly, and I happily reside in South Elgin. My daughter, Carmen, is attending school at Coastal Carolina Community College. I am a strong constitutional conservative. I believe in servant leadership, which is to say that I want to work hard to serve those that the office I am running for serves. I want to listen to the concerns of our community, and no matter what side of the political spectrum people are, work with everyone to find the common ground to help make our community better. I care about people and want the best for everyone, the most opportunity and the most choices for everyone. My goals, should I be elected to this office, are to immediately dive into how we can save taxpayers money, where we can cut costs, eliminate useless spending, essentially cut the fat. Illinois has some of the highest property taxes in the nation. I pledge, I pledge to never vote for a tax increase. Also, work to find ways we could better assist our senior citizens, find out what their concerns are and hopefully deliver solutions. Life should be easier as we get older. Next, meet with township residents and local business owners to get an idea of what's really going on in our township. I believe this office holds more responsibility than just voting on how to spend our hard earned tax money. I will give my best effort to improve our community. It's an honor to run on this slate with the following township candidates, Supervisor Ken Bruderly, Incumbent Clerk Karen Dowling, Trustees Alex Lopez, Janet Regala, and Mark Bialik, Highway Commissioner Jason Krabby, Incumbent Assessor Steve Cernicki. And finally, I stand on my own two feet I don't pander to progressive cancel or woke culture and certainly don't subscribe to socialism or anything remotely resembling this nonsense. 
please vote Republican on April 6th. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And, and finally, Ms. Van Hilden. Thank you. And thank you to the Elgin Area League of Women Voters for hosting this event, this forum tonight. And thank you to all who are participating as well as to all who are who are watching or listening to us. I am Susan Van Walden. I am a retired community college dean, director, and instructor of history and government. I served 35 years in the Illinois Community College system and retired from Elgin Community College about nine years ago. I hold degrees from Northern Illinois University and a variety of certifications. I've maintained my Illinois teaching license for 50 years. I've served on numerous boards, economic development boards and nonprofit boards in my lifetime. I'm currently serving on five or six boards, including the Upper Illinois River Valley Development Authority, which is an economic development authority that encompasses nine counties. I was appointed by the governor to that position. As far as the township, I am currently serving as uh, the liaison to the women on the brink, to the long red line, which addresses domestic violence, to the committee on youth. Uh, I also serve on the Einstein Academy board. And uh, I also serve as liaison to the South Elgin Economic Development Association. And I am a former board member there. I am married to Marvin Van Walden, who is a former small business owner, garbage and disposal, Eric. <laughs> and uh, Marvin is an Army Vietnam veteran. We have five adult children and we have 12 grandchildren. I hope to continue the work that we have begun. I was elected in 2017, in April of 2017. I'd like to continue the work that we are doing to serve Elgin residents, to all Elgin residents. And um, I think we are doing a lot of good for the residents of Elgin Township, and I hope to continue that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we're going to begin the question and answer portion of the forum with a reminder that each candidate will have two minutes to answer. Tonight, we won't give everyone the same questions. That way we won't have multiple answers to each question, which can get repetitious. But each one of you will get one question first and answer a total of three questions. So let's begin. Uh, the first question will go to everyone, but we'll begin with Mr. Lopez. Why are you running for the office of Elgin Township Trustee and what qualifications and experience will you bring to the job? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, my goals and objectives as township trustee will be based on really two simple words, uh, hard work. Uh, I'm a newcomer to, to the political <clears throat> uh, arena. And so my only promise to you is that I will work hard, uh, you know, basically to analyze uh, ways to streamline the, the process and try to find ways to remove the red tape uh, and with the goal of saving expenses, okay? Uh, my elderly parents, for example, are also Elgin residents. And, uh, on, you know, on, not unlike many of our parents, we care deeply about them. And uh, I want, I care uh, about their well-being. And so uh, I, I'm going to try to advocate for the senior citizens in, in our area and, uh, you know, just try to communicate to them, uh, basically bring their message out and have them use me as a mouthpiece uh, for, for those that, that you know, essentially can't get out or, or have a hard time uh, having their voice heard. I wanna to try to bring as much information to them as possible. I know right now, uh, you know, COVID-19 has done a number on, on everybody and uh, a lot of them don't have access to the same technology that we do. And so uh, I, I want to uh, bridge that gap for them. As far as uh, why I, I, I'm qualified to, to lead is, uh, I, like I said before, I'm an architect. I'm an expert in infrastructure. And I feel this uniquely qualifies me to make sound decisions on, uh, for example, our road district, uh, definitely with building assessments. 
to continue to uh, improve our property values and keep making Elgin Township a great place to raise a family or uh, really live out the sunset of your life. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Poulton, the same question. Why are you running for the office of Elgin Township trustee and what qualifications and experience will you bring to the job? I believe you are muted. I'm muted, sorry. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the qualifications, I have a BA in uh, business with a minor in psychology out of MBA and uh, project management organizational behavior, uh, which I think is, is somewhat of a foundation. But as I mentioned in my opening statement, um, I think I've learned a lot in the past 19 months as far as serving as a trustee. I've been involved in most of the organizations that provide services <clears throat> to our youth, to our seniors, and to those that are mentally disadvantaged or handicapped. Uh, I think with that background and experience, again, experience on leading and contributing uh, financially as well as volunteering service leads me to a better understanding of, uh, of the needs of the community and the township residents itself. What I hope to do is uh, more actively partner with the community to assess the needs, do a, actually a community assessment to better assess the needs of the community, to more aggressively reach out, to, in, to ensure that we involve all segments of the population in township decisions. And the third thing I wanna do is uh, better educate the community as far as uh, that we exist, the services we provide and how they can access them. Senior services and certainly doing an outstanding job, but I think uh, there's not enough seniors that are aware of the services they provide. Same thing with the other committees that we're, we're working on. The Committee on Mental Health should be an outstanding committee uh, uh, and the work they expect to do and the financing they'll have based on a past referendum uh, will certainly help those that are mentally challenged or having challenges in, uh, in society as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stair, are you there? I'm not sure where he disappeared, but Mrs. Uh, Van Wilden will ask the same question of you. Why are you running for office and what qualifications and experience will you bring to the job? Thank you. Well, my experience in the past four years serving as an elected trustee of Elgin Township will certainly benefit the board and benefit the residents of Elgin Township. Also, my lengthy background in education as well as economic development and business development. And of course, my experience and background with a variety of nonprofits through board work and collaboration. When I was a, a college dean, I did continuing ed economic development, and I always was involved in outreach positions for the colleges I represented. So I'm well aware of the, the various organizations and the needs of the community. Um, I'd like to point out that in the last four years, we have created a 708 uh, mental health board that was based on a referendum that was passed by the voters of Elgin Township. We also created a committee on seniors, again, because of the referendum that was passed by the voters of Elgin Township. We recently um, created a committee on youth and I am liaison for the township board to that committee. We have implemented an investment policy, which is increasing our funds that are available for township resources. We have also improved the social service contract or grant application, as well as the process. And I have a lot of experience through my college, um, my college background and experience with the grant applications, grant evaluations, and so forth. I've we have also increased the transparency and the communication with residents by live streaming the meetings on Facebook, by allowing residents to observe committee meetings via Zoom or Facebook or in person, by improvements to the website, and through several of us have been making public presentations on exactly what the township does and how it relates to other forms of government, such as the state and the county forms of government. Thank and you. Uh, Mr. Stair, are you there? I believe uh, we've lost him. I'm not yeah, sure what just, happened. Just to, just to let you know, uh, we, we experienced a, 
a Comcast shutdown here. I, I don't know if you noticed, but I dropped off too. I have I, a hot I did spot see you here. Drop off temporarily, yes. Yeah, I have a hot spot here on my phone through Verizon, and that's why I was able to hop back on quickly. All right. Well, we will go on, I guess, and hope that he rejoins us at some point. Uh, next question will go first to Mr. Poulton. How would you rate Elgin Township on tra transparency and public accessibility of information, including meeting agenda packets, minutes, and financial information? And I would rate them very high. As Susan mentioned, um, since uh, four years ago, all the meetings are viewed online. Um, the, the minutes are viewed online, uh, can be viewed anytime you want through videos and so forth that are recorded and saved just by going to the township webpage and so forth. I think there's, there's more work we can do in that area, um, but I would rate it very high. The, the challenge we have is um, like many organizations, we keep expecting people to reach out to us. Uh, what I'm proposing is that we uh, make a harder effort to Create a, do a harder effort to reach out to the community and the organizations we serve. Um, so instead of just expecting folks to come to us, we need to go to them, whether it's meeting with various organizations, as Susan's mentioned, some of us have done, um, and continue to do that and become, uh, let people know how accessible we are and the services that we provide. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lopez, same question. How would you rate Elgin Township on transparency and public accessibility of information, including meeting agenda packets, minutes, and financial information? I, I, I believe the, the current leadership um, has, it, it's, it's time to change. I, I believe, uh, for example, uh, you know, they voted to increase the township's property tax levy just about every year. Uh, I know that recently there was a $1 million tax hike uh, uh, for the people of the township. Uh, really, there is, uh, there's a myriad of, of reasons. Uh, there was, uh, I believe, a butterfly garden that was, uh, that was recently, uh, uh, you know, put together. Uh, there is a, a beekeeping farm, for example. All of these uh, things take away from the real uh, uh, mission of the township. Uh, I remember, you know, last year I got a letter from uh, from from uh, some company uh, covering my, you know, uh, I, I guess uh, drainage or something like that with the with the town's uh, township seal on it. So, um, I, like I said before, you know, I'm an early, uh, a new uh, comer to, to this, and I believe there is, uh, there's a need for new blood. And I'm not just talking about me. I think uh, as an go uh, entire government, I think uh, there is, there is a, a good, uh, uh, basically, term limits being uh, mm -hmm. uh, a good thing and people changing. And so... Um, I think it's just time for a change. I think uh, some new blood is definitely due in the township. And I hope that uh, I'm a person that will uh, help it get back on track. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Van Wilden, what are your priorities for the General Assistance Fund and what changes, if any, would you like to see? At this time, I think we're doing a good job with the General Assistance Fund. Uh, I think there may be additional funds that come available for um, housing, rental assistance. Those may come to us through the county. They're, they're, not, they're not funds, not taxes that we have levied or anything like that, but they're CARES Act funds that are coming through the county has to distribute these funds. So they're looking at distribute them, distributing them through the 14 or 15 townships within Kane County. So I think that'll be an additional resource for people, especially with COVID right now, people, there's so many people who are in need of emergency assistance or general assistance, but I believe the formula and the system that we're using right now is working. And I can't, 
I can't foresee changing that. I could see adding additional resources that come to us, for example, from the county. Thank you. Mr. Poulton, the same question. What are your priorities for the General Assistance Fund and what changes, if any, would you like to see? Um, I, I will echo uh, Susan, Ms. Ben Weldon's comments. Um, I think they do an adequate job, a good job, as a matter of fact. I think the biggest concern we have as trustees, the board, uh, and the community is that um, at some point in time, the state and federal, uh, I don't want to say subsidies, but freezes on uh, uh, rent, rent deferrals and those kinds of things will uh, stop. And at that point in time, we are concerned that there will be a significant increase of people coming to the township to ask for funds. Now, interestingly enough, the federal government struggling to provide for folks. State government has funding issue. Uh, the city of Elgin has funding issues. However, the township seems to be not only the most uh, organization closest to the people, but it still has funds that are available uh, to expand or provide, or I should say, transfer funds from other parts of the township budget to offer additional assistance. Um, I think we're doing. I think they're doing a great job. They remained open and serving people during the pandemic, when everything else was pretty much closed down. Except there weren't a lot of people requesting money because they weren't being uh, ousted from their properties or their homes or their rental apartments because of not paying uh, rent. That that. Uh, tsunami, so to speak, will be coming soon. Um, and at that point in time, we may have to transfer some additional funds into that, that part, of the, uh, part of the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lopez, how could the township improve communication and engagement with residents, specifically uh, programs and services available, township road maintenance, <laughs> and the annual meeting of electors? I believe that uh, we don't use technology to its fullest extent. I think, uh, you know, we rely too much on, uh, for example, email, okay? And that's something that we, we have been accustomed to the past few years and we all get junk mail and sometimes it's hard to uh, distinguish uh, what is important and what isn't as uh, you know, some of us have multiple email accounts work and, and uh, junk email accounts and your home email account. So I think using uh, text messaging and social media uh, to a, a greater extent would certainly reach more people, target audience. Everybody has a phone. Uh, it seems uh, it's glued to their pocket, right? In their hand. And to me, uh, we need to, uh, I believe, use that technology uh, a lot better and a lot more efficient. And so that's how I would reach uh, more of my constituents and uh, in giving uh, targeted, fast, efficient, useful information. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Van Wielden, same question. How could the township improve communication and engagement with residents, specifically about programs and services available, uh, township road maintenance and the annual meeting of electors. We do publish everything on the website. We do live stream our meetings on Facebook. We do allow anyone who wants to sit in on any of our committees to do so via Zoom or in person. Um, how could we improve it? We also do publish it in um, at least one, if not two of the local newspapers. And we put up announcements in the township building. I'm trying to think how else we might. Um, perhaps, uh, well, we do put it on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, so I'm not sure, I think we're doing the best we can. I think now that COVID is uh, winding down, we can do more of these public presentations prior, prior to COVID 
several of us were going out and doing probably two presentations a week to groups at the library, to, to women's groups, and to all sorts of uh, business organizations to educate people on, on the township and what we had to offer and what we actually do and what, what are the duties of the township. You know, what does township code in, in, um, include as opposed to say the, um, the laws for the county or the laws for the state. It's kind of a different ball game. So I guess continue doing what we're doing with all of the social media as well as um, the website. Thank you. Well, since we lost Mr. Stair, we'll, we'll just wing it and add one more question. We'll let all of you have a go at it. Um, Mr. Poulton, we'll go to you first. Um, what is your estimation of the financial health of the township? Do they have adequate funds? Are they looking for more funds? Does the budget balance are you doing enough with the funds that you do have? We're not seeking an additional funds. I do not think we increased the tax rate um, in the last go round, as a matter of fact, for the township itself. Um, so we do have sufficient funds. Actually, we're trying to do more with the funds that we have. Um, I led an effort uh, with a, another trustee who's moved on to change our investment policies. Uh, so we're actually getting a better return on our investments than we had before. Um, so I, I think we're, we're sitting pretty well, um, based on the fact that 67 or 68% of the population voted for a mental health referendum that will, uh, that will create funding for mental health purposes and agencies and so forth. So actually, uh, we should have additional funds coming back or being available to support senior services or, or services for seniors as well as services for youth and so forth. Um, it, it, I have a few seconds, so let me go back to the other question. I have a minute. Um, uh, the other thing Susan did not mention is we actually even tried sending out an email to um, all the uh, email accounts we had for township residents to see if that would help uh, get people involved. Um, and it was a newsletter. And I think the open rate was maybe six or 7%. So, you know, we we're trying, as Susan said, uh, reaching out and identifying any opportunity. Frankly, I don't want a whole bunch of additional text messages on my phone because I get too many now from unwanted. I think I've won an Apple iPod like 16 times in the past week. So uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Van Wielden, we'll go to, back to you next. Uh, what is your assessment of the financial health of the township? Do they have adequate funds? Are they looking to ask for more funds? How well are they managing the funds they've got? We do have adequate funds. I believe we're doing an excellent job of managing the various funds that we have. And we do, ha we do balance the budget every year. And as Rick mentioned, we have instituted an investment policy, which is actually creating interest, which is allowing us to increase funds to put towards programs for our residents. And I'd like to point something out that I think is unique to Elgin Township compared to some of the other townships. Some of the other townships create their own programs. They create programs for seniors or they create their own senior center, for example, they create uh, programs for youth. What we do, I think, is more efficient, and I believe it is more uh, fiscally conservative. We support the organizations that are already here in the township. We partner with them and help support them with our finances rather than try to, you know, build buildings and hire staff I mean, why should we run a girls and boys club when we have a wonderful girls and boys club in Elgin and soon to be a girls and boys club um, south in uh, South Elgin and annex in South Elgin. So I'm very proud of the way that we handle the monies, the funds in Elgin Township, balanced budget. Uh, we have money in reserve through our investment policy. We're frugal and we partner with existing 
uh, nonprofits and social service agencies to get the most bang for our buck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lopez, we'll let you weigh in if you wish. Uh, what is your assessment of the financial health of the township? Uh, do they have adequate funds? Should they be looking for additional funds? How well are they managing the funds they have? Well, I have to be honest with you. I, I don't have that information and I'm not privy to it since I, uh, uh, I have not looked into it. So it would be um, dishonest for me to uh, have an opinion on it either way. I know that uh, I live probably two and a half minutes away from the building. I, like I said, I've been here for about 16 years. And prior to me joining the race here, I hadn't really heard much about the township or its services provided to me. Now, that's not to say that they haven't uh, or they do not have services or their budget is balanced or unbalanced. I just don't know enough to answer that question. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you all for answering our questions. Uh, if there were topics that you didn't get the chance to address, you can include them now in your two minute closing statement. Um, going in reverse order, we're going to begin with Mrs. Van Wielden. Well, thank you. I believe our current board is worthy of re-election. I believe we have dedicated ourselves to the residents of Elgin Township. We've made an awful lot of changes in the past four years. Someone talked about change. Well, we were the change. There had never been any Democrats elected ever in Elgin Township since it was established. And four years ago, several of us were elected. That is the change. We're doing a good job, so there's no reason to change. Our predecessors served for 20 years and it was time for a change in 2017. Now we've made a lot of changes. We've made a lot of progress and I believe the voters will see that. I'm asking for your vote. I'm asking for another four years for the current board of Elgin Township. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Poulton, your closing statement, please. Thank you. I'm running for the position of Elgin Township trustee, a position to which I was appointed to in August of 2019. Since my appointment, I've worked diligently to better understand the workings of the township. Prior to and especially since retiring early, I have volunteered at, worked with, contributed to, or served on the boards of most of the township's social service organizations. Upon, upon being appointed to the township trustee position, I've gained a better understanding, a greater understanding of how these organizations serve our residents. I've actively led and contributed to many of the township's initiatives over these 19 months including, as Susan mentioned, investigating and presenting a better investment strategy for the township's funds, soliciting feedback regarding the mental health referendum, and speaking to community leaders about how the township might be more inclusive. Some of the results uh, confirm that we need to more actively partner with the community to assess the community's needs and to develop a plan regarding how we might better address those needs and thereby better utilize tax dollars. We need to more aggressively reach out to better involve the community to encourage the involvement of all community segments. I think Alex referenced that as well. Uh, and we need to educate the community regarding the service and opportunities provided by the township. We've started that way. We've just got more work to do. Although there have been past efforts um, addressing these needs, I believe we have uh, the, I have the background and skills to further pursue these efforts and to commit, and I commit to actively doing so. Remember, early voting starts March 22nd, election day is April 6th. Please like my Facebook page, Rick Poulton's Campaign Committee, and vote for Richard Poulton and encourage your township friends and relatives to do the same. Thanks again for viewing and thanks to the League of Women Voters for conducting this forum. Again, thank you personally, Carol. Thank you. Uh, and Mr. Lopez, your closing statement. Yeah, absolutely. First, uh, I, I wanna thank Susan and Rick for, for joining uh, and, and also for your willingness to put yourself out there uh, like myself. I think it, uh, it takes a, a certain individual to be able to uh, 
handle uh, the public and public's comments. I know that, uh, you know, not everybody uh, will agree on, on different issues. Uh, and so I just want to thank you too for, you know, giving me an opportunity to uh, run this race with you. Um, I really strongly believe, um, you know, especially in these times here of great strife in our country, uh, that compassion and understanding our neighbor and your sense of sense of togetherness and, and really, uh, this is a chance to reunite our communities. We have different points of views, uh, but really, uh, whether they're personal or professional, I think we could achieve a goal of having Elgin Township, uh, uh, you know, be a better environment. Uh, we always want something to be better uh, than what we left. And, uh, you know, really for, for us and, and those that uh, will come after us. So thank you. Thank you all for participating in this candidate forum and giving the voters a chance to hear your views. For more information on these and other candidates, check the voter guide on our website, lwvelginarea.org. Uh, since we lost Mr. Stair due, due to uh, technical difficulties, I guess, uh, you can access his questionnaire and learn more about uh, his candidacy. That concludes today's candidate forum. I want to thank the candidates, the league members who work to provide this virtual forum, and the voters who take the time to watch these forums and learn about the candidates in order to make an informed choice. If you applied to vote by mail, ballots are already being mailed out now. Voting early in person at specified early voting sites begins on March 22nd, and voting on election day at your regular polling place will of course be on April 6th. If you plan to vote early, please note that different sites are open different hours, and there may be some changes this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. You can check the Kane County Elections website for any updates there. We hope that this candidate forum presented as a public service by the League of Women Voters has been helpful. If you are interested in joining the Elgin Area League of Women Voters or supporting the work that we do, please contact us at lwvelginarea.org. League membership is open to men as well as women, and we welcome anyone interested in issues, voter registration, and elections. Thank you, and good night. Thank you, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Thank you. Good evening. I want to thank the League of Women's Voters for allowing me this opportunity to make my closing statement. My sincere apologies to Susan and Rick for not being able to participate as I lost my internet connection. When I lost connection, I believe the question asked was, why are you running for Elgin Township trustee? I'd like to answer that question with my closing statement. Simply put, I'm fired up for many reasons, but, I, but I'll stick to what's relevant. Four years ago, Democrats vowed to eliminate the road district. Jose Boss, the Democrat candidate for road commissioner, doubled down on this promise. This will effectively leave thousands of residents without service, and open it up to private contractors to service our community. Many of you are well aware of pay to play schemes. This is almost certainly what will happen. The service will be average at best and your Democrat officials could receive kickbacks, just like the ComEd scandal. The only way this can happen is one of two ways, circulate a petition or trustees vote to put a referendum on the ballot to eliminate the road district. I will never vote yes on this if elected. Jason Crabby is the only option for this office. He's got 15 years experience, takes pride in his work and loves our community. Jason's opposition, Jose Bosque, has a repeat violent criminal history and zero experience in road maintenance or construction. My next reason for joining our Republican township slate is Mr. Ramirez. I am in no way attacking him personally, nor was my last reference to Jose Bosque. However, I have a few concerns about how our tax money is being spent with him at the helm. This is my understanding of the facts. He gets $350 a month car allowance. 
I only ask why. He ran four years ago promising to cut the supervisor's salary. Yet that hasn't happened, but instead has given himself raises each year. Why? <clears throat> In my humble opinion, when you say you're going to do something, do it. He receives 100% paid health insurance. Not one cent is out of pocket for Franklin. This seems like a pretty sweet deal to me. How much does that cost the taxpayer? And last, he has repeatedly taken month-long vacations. I'm all for R&R, but does he still receive a $350 car allowance at the expense of the taxpayer while traveling the world? Unfortunately, the Democrats primaried out the only viable candidate for supervisor, Brenda Rogers. She has a powerful personality. I'm sure her and I disagree on issues, but her heart seems to be in the right place. I know Ken Brutally very well. He is well qualified and will make the right choices for our community if elected for supervisor. Karen Dowling is an amazing woman and your current township clerk. There is not a better candidate suited for this position. Here I've laid out just a few reasons why I decided to step up and serve our community. Now I know my political resume is non-existent, but I am motivated and will fight tirelessly for you. I will represent you in a manner nothing short of honorably. My mission is to ensure our township is run responsibly for all residents and put an end to wasteful spending. God bless and please vote Republican on April 6th. Thank you.